Hey guys, this is Corey. I haven't made a video in a really long time right now, and um, there's reasons for that. Um, I'm, uh, I've been struggling pretty bad with my um, drug addiction, particularly with DXM addiction. And I kind of wanted to make a video today talking about DXM addiction and what that's like and what it's doing to me. And um, basically I'm four days clean right now and um, I'm trying to get into treatment. And um, I don't know, I, I keep relapsing. The, the most I made it this last time I tried to quit was about three weeks. Then I got money at the beginning of the month for my disability check and I just couldn't handle it. And I went on another bin, I, I went on another bender. Um, then I got, I tried working. I got, I got hired with Burger King I worked for a Burger King for three days and then had to quit the job because the job had negative impacts on my mental health. It, my employer was causing me a lot of aggravation and it was triggering um, some of my more schizophrenic symptoms. So I just didn't want to deal with that. I, I didn't want to deal with that much stress. Um, when I'm already getting a guaranteed $800 a month, like why, why would I go to a job and stress myself out and deal with all this disrespect when I'm already getting a guaranteed $800 a month and, you know, I have subsidized rent for my apartment, so I really don't pay very much at all for this apartment. So there's, there's not enough incentive for me to want to put up with certain things in the workplace right now. And, um, but at the same time, I was kind of upset that the job didn't work out. So that triggered me to use even more drugs. Um, so I did. And, um, basically where I'm at right now is I'm just, um, patiently waiting to get into inpatient treatment. Um, my case, my chemical dependency case manager is really pushing for me to get into it. Um, he he has been seeing me for two years now and he's seen me relapse quite a bit now and we've never really tried inpatient before i've done iop twice now i've done another group that was kind of like iop for two years um i did another drug i did a couple other drug and alcohol groups when i was at desc in seattle a few years ago um so I've done pretty much everything but go to an actual inpatient rehab uh, facility. So we're thinking about doing that right now, um, but we're having some problems with insurance, basically with my Medicare health insurance that comes with my social security disability. Um, the, 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 detox, the detox treatment programs we have here in Grand Rapids aren't, um, they, they won't work with my Medicare health insurance. So I have to go somewhere across the state. I'm looking at going to Detroit Metro. Um, so I'll make, a, I'll make another video before that happens and talk about where I'm gonna go to treatment at and all that and what, what that's gonna be like. But um, I, I don't know, that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I'm still doing, I'm doing a combination of programs right now. I attend AA, NA, and now, as of yesterday, also CA, um, which I'm finding helpful as well. So I do those three, and I'm still in my outpatient treatment program with um, my case manager, Dan Cook. Um, I, I'm still in my program with him through Telebehavioral Health US, and um, I'm still in my mental health program through Hope Network to do therapy with them and my medication management and all them. I'm still continuing all that. I'm going to continue it up until I go to treatment. Then when I come back from treatment, I'm going to continue it when I get back. Um, just really hoping I can stay clean. But um, right now, honestly, I'm struggling and I'm having a really hard time staying clean. Um, a couple days ago on my second day clean, um, Mike busted me trying to go out and get DXM and um, that caused a problem and almost ended our relationship. So that happened on the second day clean. And um, 
I still have all these negative thoughts going in my head of like how I could get it, you know, how I can do it without people noticing. Um, just, you know, there's just still a lot of temptation. There's still a lot of cravings. I'm not very far in my recovery and I'm still getting a lot of crafty ideas, um, so to speak. Um, but a lot of you are probably just wondering like what DXM addiction is because it's not very popular. Um, and there's a guy on YouTube I recommend you guys check out. His I, I think I want to say his name on YouTube. I think he goes by CJ the Kid. Um, if you guys look up CJ the Kid, um, CJ the Kid is a guy who has done a lot of different drugs. And I mean, by his looking at his channel, I mean, it looks like a lot of different drugs. Um, and one of them is DXM. And um, he's clean now. He's been clean for quite a while, but he talks about his experience with these drugs and what each drug is like. And um, he has two videos about DXM. One of them I already watched. It's just kind of explaining like what it is basically. And then he has another one that talks about his story of him being on D DXM. Um, that's kind of a longer video. And I still have to watch that one yet. I'm going to try to watch it later tonight and check that out and see what that's all about because I'm interested in it. But um, anyway, for those of you guys who don't know, DXM is a cough suppressant. And um, it's in a lot of different types of uh, cold medicine. It's in Robitussin, DayQuil, NyQuil. Rexall, Sudafed, Mucinex, all that shit has DXM in it. And um, I know it doesn't, it might sound kind of weird because it's like, you know, it's just cough syrup, but it's a very, very powerful high. Um, people compare the, 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 the high you get from it. People compare it to PCP or, or sometimes ketamine. Um, that's what people say it's like, which I've never done PCP or ketamine, but I have heard things about it. And I do know that DXM high is a really powerful high. Um, I hear some of these poor people. I've heard some of these homeless people around here call it a uh, poor man's LSD. Um, kind of does remind me of LSD a little bit because I used to have a, lot, uh, a problem with LSD in the past the first time I lived in Michigan. Um, so I kind of know a little bit about that too, but, um, I just can't believe how addicting DXM is you guys. Um, I, I go through a lot of D when I'm on it, I go through a lot of DXM, you guys. I mean, I spend a lot of money on this habit. I take it very seriously and that's why I have a lot of the financial problems that I have. And, um, so that's basically what it is. It's a cough suppressant. Um, you take, in order to get it to work, to get the high activated, you take quite a bit of the, whatever you're taking, whatever kind it is. Um, you know, usually around 20 pills if you're doing the pills. Um, if you're drinking it, I don't know. I don't drink it because the taste makes me throw up. So I take the pills. But um, I know some people that drink it. And, um, I don't really know much about that. I don't know how much you need, so I can't really talk about that much, but, um, I can tell you about the pills cause that's what I do. Um, I take 20 to 40 pills a day when I do it. So, um, I am really, um, wanting, I'm at a point where I'm really wanting to get off DXM because of how dangerous of a drug it is. Um, let me just kind of give you guys an idea here. Just Pure DXM that's not mixed with anything is really bad for you. It's really hard on your organs as it is. Um, I remember when I first started doing it in high school, one person warned me that it's really hard on your intestines. It fucks up your intestines. Um, and it also fucks up your liver and your kidneys. Um, the, problem, the problem that I have is I'm worried that if I don't stop using DXM, I think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be alive very much longer. I think I'm going to pass away pretty soon because the kind of DXM that I'm doing is a little bit more dangerous because it's mixed with acetaminophen. And, um, I've been told that when it's mixed with acetaminophen, that can be fatal because too much acetaminophen shuts down your liver. If you take acetaminophen in high doses, 
which, you know, DXM, you need an extremely high dose. Um, it shuts your liver down. And um, if it shuts your liver down, there's really no turning back. Like the doctors can't resuscitate you. Um, once it happens, you're just dead. There's just, there's no turning back. So I really do hope this treatment thing works, you guys. Um, I really hope the support groups that I'm in work. And just, if you believe in prayers or anything like that, just pray that I can quit using these drugs, you guys. Cause I, I think if I, if I continue to use drugs, I don't think I'm going to really be here very much longer. So, um, any support I can get, I appreciate. And I appreciate you guys all for watching this video and learning something about DXM. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say for tonight, you guys. So I hope everyone, it's Friday night, September 24th, getting close to 6.30 p.m. Weekend is here. I hope everybody had a good week. I hope you guys are gonna have a good weekend. Um, give me a shout out if you have any questions about this and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. All right, peace out for now, guys. Good night.